So in this version of the lesson, I'm gonna kind of give you a very slightly simplified. There's a couple of little hitches that he throws in there. I'm gonna resolve those out. But for the most part, this entire thing is based on one right hand pattern, pretty much just set over a series of chords. So what I'll do is I'll show you the chords first. This is definitely the trickiest part. The chords of the song are not terribly conventional and there's a lot of them. So um, it's very, it feels very much like a classical guitar piece like the Romanza, if you any of you played it. This is very much reminiscent of that. So it's you know, it, so that's the first thing we're gonna go over. And then I'll show you the right hand pattern, which is very simple. And then we'll go over at the end, we'll transpose the whole right hand pattern over all the chords. So start out here in kind of an open B7 thing. You get your, you use your pointer finger to do the second fret of the A string. And though normally you'd bar this, you don't worry about that because the main thing is you've got these, you're just playing the ring finger and the middle, ah, the, yeah, the ring finger and the pinky and you're sliding up a fret. So that's the main way it starts. It kind of does a pickup note. Oh, hummingbird. It goes to the next chord. The next chord is sort of um, open E minor 11-ish type thing. Pointer fingers on the seventh fret of the E string. Pinkies on the 10th fret of the B string, and you're playing the G string open and the low E. So most of this is gonna be done with these three fingers and the thumb, so I'll just tell you where these fingers go. That's your first chord. You're gonna follow this down through a melody. You're gonna let the pinky go. It's gonna to go to the 10th fret of the E string, and you're gonna go, mankind was waiting. So that's 10, eight, seven, five, seven, you can kind of hit this five again if you want to, but I usually skip that and give myself a little time to get to this next chord. This is sort of like an open C major up here. You can use your thumb to reach the eighth fret of the E string. I use my middle finger to play the ninth fret of the D string and my pointer finger to play the eighth fret of the B string. And you kind of just play a melodic note on the 10th fret of the B string. You two come, you slide that down a half step. Flying up. And your melodic note is now a half step above this, so it's like seven to eight. Flying along. I'm gonna put my pinky and my ring finger on the 10th fret of the E and B strings. I suppose it doesn't have to be those fingers, but they go pretty nicely to the next things that are coming up. So I usually do those two on 12. The G string's still open, you're playing on the low E. You slide them down two frets to 10. And this is sort of another E minor shape. I'm gonna kind of keep this ring finger, slide it down two frets to eight and use my middle finger on seven. So that's my next sort of E minor variation right there. The thumb is gonna go play the A string. This is kind of like an A13 chord. Pointer finger on the fifth fret of the E string. Ring finger, seventh fret of the B string. G is still open. And my melodic note is five to seven on the E string. Songbird, we were you're going to keep this ring finger. This ring finger is a guide finger down this whole phrase. It goes down to the fifth fret of the E string. The pointer finger is going to go to the second fret of the A string down here. And your pinky is going to be on the fifth fret of the E string. So you kind of got a two five fret thing going. G string still open. You slide the ring finger down again to the fourth fret. The middle finger plays the third fret of the E string and your melodic note is the five. So it's kind of like a C minor 13 variation. And you can just take this whole shape and just shift it one set of strings that way. Now it's a G thing. Or you can use the thumb there if you want. I'll just keep this finger here. So third fret of the E string, third fret of the B string, third fret of the, well, fourth fret of the D string. And your melodic notes up to the fifth fret of the B string. We've harmed you. Slide that down a half step. Oh, humming. Second fret of the B string. Third fret of the B string, open E. Oh, humming. And then this next chord's a little funny. You bar on the second fret of the of the well of all the strings, but you're only gonna play the outer two E strings with that. They're both on F sharps now. The pinky is going to be on the fifth fret of the B string. The ring finger's gonna be on the fourth fret of the D string. And you just kind of play the outer strings, low E and it's out of four strings. And you kind of lift the bar up to give you an open E string. So you go, oh hummingbird. And you kind of leave these three fingers in this position. 
Next thing, we're gonna kind of go to like a little B triad position. Keep this open low E. Your pinky's just gonna slide back. And you, I usually just drop the bar at this point and bring the pointer finger over because it's a little easier to hold. But I'm playing second fret of the E string, pinky fourth fret of the B string, ring finger fourth fret of the D string, and open low E. Then dust your wings. You can just brush that twice for those parts. Let us soar. It's sort of like a partial D chord, pointer fingers on the second fret of the E string. Middle finger is third fret of the B string, G string's open, still on the low E. Let us soar. So this gives us a really nice E minor 9 all of a sudden. Now, I slide the middle finger back one fret to the second fret of the B string, ring finger third fret of the E string, and I'm playing the open A. So now I'm playing sort of an A7. In the atmosphere. Now you're gonna go to sort of an F sharp minor seven. It'd be like a normal F sharp minor shape, except the pinky is off. So you're playing, you get the second fret of the D string with your bar. And usually the way I do this is I'm still kind of plucking these three thing, these three strings, the thin three strings, these fingers, but the bass will go. So it kind of gets that note in there, it'll go. Bum, 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 bum. Because that seventh is a nice note to get in there. We'll get to more of that when we get to the right hand stuff. All right. If you haven't, go back, see how much of this stuff you still got. Do a quick spot check, review. We're getting right into the meaty part of it right here. This part gets a little tricky. So see if you got what you have so far. Come back to here. All right, here we go. Moving on. The next chord is a C sharp major shape. It's basically like a C shape, but it's up on the first fret with a bar. So I got the pinky on the fourth fret of the A string, ring finger on the third fret of the D string. Pointer finger is doing a bar, but it's getting the first fret of the G string. Middle finger, second fret of the B, and then the bar is also getting the first fret of the E string. Lift us up. That's what's there, yeah. Lift us up to the heaven of holiness. I just kind of take this bar and slide it up. The open D string is now my low string. And I'm just playing kind of a three note D major seven voicing. It's just a little mini bar on the G, B, and E strings. So it's lift us up to the heaven of holiness. You can do some melodic stuff in there if you like, but just that chord will do. Slide that up again to the fourth fret and then make the same shape you made for the C, but leave the middle finger out so you get a C, uh, not a C, it's an E major seven chord with the open shape. And you can play the open low E if you like now. I actually use the same bass pattern I do over the F sharp minor chord. Low, high, middle, low, high, middle. So you kind of get this whole very rich E major seven chord with this kind of, you know, C major seven shell. And this is, oh, source of our being. This chord is sort of, um, Hmm. Oh yeah, what does he play here? I always play something differently than what he does. What he plays here is he goes from this E major 7, he kind of just folds everything into kind of a very broad A major 7 voicing. So you got open low A, pinky on the 7th of the D, and you got a diagonal line going that way. 6th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret. And that's a source of our being. And he holds that for So we're just going to focus on the finger picking intro for now. So I'm not going to go any further than that for the moment. But now, if you feel like you've got those voicings for the intro, let's look at the right hand. Right hand is very simple. It's almost entirely a thumb on the downbeat on the bass note. And these three fingers go ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer, and just triplets. It's, it's nine eighths, so like one, two. That's the pattern you want to do. See if you can just get that over an E minor kind of slowly like this. One, two, three, one, two. Two more times. One, two, three, one. Now I was doing that right there with plants. It's planting my fingers, like snapping into place. When I actually play this, I, I mostly do that for accuracy now. When I'm actually playing, I, I let them be free. So it just rings. 
sound, you, should, you should hear the difference from. Now they stop the planting. Okay, that little choke that disappears. That's a good thing to do if you can. It just lets this ring a bit better. Okay, now let's see if we can put this all together over the chords. So start out with the little pickup note here. Oh, humming. Right on that. Does it again. Does the walk. Mankind was waiting. So every time he hits the ring finger, that's when he does the melody move. Mankind was waiting for. When he gets to this chord, he just kind of plucks it and does the melody notes. Same thing. Pluck, melody note, and back to the pattern. Take the pattern over the moving chord. As you go down this thing, it's the same pattern. Heavenly songbird, we were so wrong. Make sure your thumbs on my bass notes. We've harmed you. So you just moved a bunch of times there. And here's another pluck melody note. So you're gonna pluck on the B string twice, and then pluck the open E for the last note. And back to the pattern. And then open E. To the B. If over that second B that you do there, you wanna go. Usually I'll do that, just kinda of give it a little melody. Land us your wings, let us soar. Excuse me, over here. There we go. So that chord is just, you know, two bars of. Standard pattern. Same thing here. In the atmosphere. And when you get to this chord, the F sharp minor, you keep doing this, but you're gonna do a thumb stroke on every beat. On every one, two, three, and it's gonna be low, high, middle. So it's like high, middle, low. So every ring finger stroke has got a thumb stroke pinching with it. So we've done that. Try to land right on the. And move back to the regular bass. So up here. Same thing here, regular bass. And here we do the three stroke bass again. One, two, three. One, two, three. To the A major seven. Back to normal here. And you get one nice brush stroke at the end. So. If that clears up the details, hopefully it does. Now let's try to play through the whole thing slowly and see how we do. Right? Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, hummingbird. Mankind was waiting for you to come. This one, this is a finger picking intro I've had to work on quite a bit to get it smooth. Getting the chord shifts to be relatively seamless is definitely tricky. Oftentimes I'll slow the finger picking pattern down a little bit as I get close to chord changes, especially going into the C sharp major seven, coming out of the F sharp minor. And C 
see it in that, and it's tricky. So usually I'll just kind of kind of do that pinch and then give myself a little time to move. So, and that usually doesn't affect the sound too badly, but it will really, really help that land clean. It's a, you don't want to like crunch on that chord like I did right there. If you want to, you can just get... That's ideal to kind of just have everything kind of land. So don't be shy about giving yourself a little bit of extra space or just dropping a couple notes at the end of the pattern to prepare the next chord. There's a lot of tricky chord changes in this song and you really want to give yourself time to land them cleanly. That's really what gives it the nice kind of smooth feeling it really needs. All right, so part one of the finger picking is down. Next time we'll go into some more details, like a little extra stuff that he does and we'll probably go over the, the comping for the rest of the song, how you strum all the other chords and everything. It's a good time. Great song. Looking forward to doing this with you folks. Catch you later.